Who would win out of a crocodile and Batman? Dude, great question, man. I mean, easy question, but whatever. I mean, is it easy? I would say Batman. Yeah, bro. I would say Me too. Batman. What is up, Zendu Nation? Welcome back to episode double digits. That's right, we're on episode 10. Number 10. I know. Wow. That's great. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? First and foremost, I wanted to say, to clear up any confusion about Ask the Zen Dudes, um, if you guys, you, what you need to do to ask questions is go to the link below and join our free four week challenge because from there, you're gonna go into a private Facebook group mm -hmm. That's where we post, I post once a week and say, hey guys, ask your questions, and then people comment on that post. That's where we get the questions from to make these YouTube videos. So don't post your question on one of these videos thinking it's going to get answered. Join the four week challenge, join the Facebook group, post it in there. It's all free? It is all free. If you're worried about that, it's free 99, and by free 99, I'm not trying to confuse you, it's just free. It's free. It's not money. It's negative dollars. Well, not negative dollars. It's well, yeah, zero. Yeah, zero. Zero. What are we bringing? Question number one. Gershi asks, asks, how long did you do this before you realized it could be a real business? And what did you do to make money while you were building it up? Great question, my friend, Brennan. We had the belief from the very beginning, from the first time Dan was sitting on his couch and I was standing behind him and we said, Zen Dude Fitness? that like this was gonna be successful. And because we had that belief, we knew it was going to be a profitable business and we knew it was gonna work. We had no idea how, we just knew it would work. And so, your question regarding how do we make money, well we did two things to be completely honest. The first thing, we moved to Columbia where you can live for three times cheaper, so our expenses were dramatically dropped and we started making money almost immediately and we just lived off the small amount of money that we were making just from coaching people personally. Um, Dan, you had some savings put away from corporate life. That was helpful. Dan kind of helped us make our way in the beginning. Make beginning. the way. But dude, guys, look, like Brandon's absolutely right. Like we, I quit my job and like there was no backup plan. Like there was absolutely, I was like, I'm never gonna have a job again. Like. I mentally snapped into this into this mode of just belief that this was going to work, and that's dude. That's I wish there was more. Like that really is what like how it went. Even to the point where like yeah, I took my I took my savings and was just like you know we we used that like we basically my point is we did whatever we could because yes at the beginning it was a struggle like mm -hmm. it was definitely hard but all that work that we put in and all that faith and all that belief has now paid off and is now continuing to pay off in bigger ways. So, dude, if you're asking this question because you have anything that you wanna do and you have something, um, dude, just find a belief, man. Like, it has to be something at the core of yourself that you want so badly that you just believe it is going to happen. And, and honestly, man, like, that's not something Brandon and I are born with. You have to cultivate this idea that you will make it and you have to practice that idea. You have to practice that mindset. Mm -hmm. Andrew asks, what are our favorite alcoholic drinks? None, I've never had one. I love whiskey, so either Manhattans or whiskey sours or old fashions. Those are my, my three go-tos. Gin and tonic, whiskey with a little bit of tap water on ice, and IPAs for beer, and oh, red, red wine. Red uh, wine. I, you know, I wasn't even thinking that, I was thinking like uh, hard liquor, well, love beer. Little beer. What kind of beer do you like? I like red ales specifically. Yeah, you do. Um, I like red ales. And I like red wine as well. Dude. We like it all. We like to get <laughs> hammered. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> no, guys, we don't. We, we drink alcohol. We love all kinds of alcohol, but we do it in moderation. Yeah. We suggest you do No, we really do max it usually around like three, maybe four drinks at the most. Yeah, like your birthday last week. Oh! oh. <laughs> I really do have just three drinks. Yeah. Wait, no, Big I ones. No, I like, no, you I like six. That. Come on. What, dude, William, great question. Mm. William asks, what was your upbringing like? Hope this question is not too vague or personal. Absolutely not. Brandon, go ahead. My upbringing. Grew up in Queens, New York from zero to six years of age. Parents were not doing that well financially. Then they started to make a little bit of money. My mom was a teacher. My dad um, was self-employed, was figuring it out. Uh, then we moved to Long Island once we had a little more money. 
from 6 to 12, then I moved to Oregon, was there from 12 to 18. Um, my dad began to gain some more momentum with his, his own business he was running, and we were living a nice middle class lifestyle all throughout high school. So it was pretty cushy, honestly. It was good. It was a good life. And for me, mine was a super humble upbringing. I have the, some of the best parents I feel in the world. They were super supportive. Uh, we lived out in the middle of nowhere, and it's not like down south out in the middle of nowhere, but if you know where Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is, Lank Lank, amongst, among, amongst all the Amish people, we lived, uh, my parents live out amongst all the farms, so that's where I grew up. I grew up in a great small town that was very, um, it was a good place to grow up. Like Lancaster is a very nice place to grow up as a kid. So um, the only thing that I wish I had more of was city. I'm a huge city person now. My extended family is all over different cities. And I grew up from zero to 18 in this really small town. And again, I love it, but like my energy level was always just way too high. And I always felt to myself like, I wanna go, I wanna go somewhere like, I wanna go, I wanna go somewhere really big. So, um, Great upbringing, super supportive parents. Yeah. Um, my dad was a, a blue collar worker. My mom is a third grade teacher. I got a great sister who's now a teacher as well. Isn't that interesting that like we both had moms that were teachers, both had really solid parents. Yeah. Um, probably shaped the way we are, how we are right now. I think Yeah. just the best thing you can do in this world, in my opinion, is just be a good parent because then you, you create this human who wants to do good in the world and doesn't feel resentment like i feel we both want to like do good because we we received that growing up dude shout out to mom and dad because mom and dad like, even though like we've all had our struggles i've had many struggles in life you've had many as well everyone goes through struggles but like seriously like my mom and dad were just like they i'm, I'm like a generally happy person just because i grew up around people who were like really well mannered well tempered and just like made the right decisions. Hmm. Thanks, mom and dad. I love you. Thanks for the question, William. <laughs> Diego asks, which is your favorite jump rope exercise or move? We're gonna go ahead. Uh, for me, crisscross, because I'm not, I'm not the master level ninja yet, but like I can do some moves and crisscrossing makes me feel like I'm on the moon. <laughs> For me, it's really timely that you asked this question. I literally just released a video today called my favorite jump rope trick. My favorite jump rope trick currently is the fast side swipe crisscross. Watch the tutorial to, uh, to know, to find out what that's mm -hmm. all about. Five. 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 Susanna asks, as someone who left the city to look for a better quality of life, mm -hmm. why Medellin? Go ahead, Brandon. Well, originally, as you mentioned, yeah. Medellin, is an awesome city, but it's also three times less expensive than living in a major city in the US, like LA or New York City. So we were afforded that luxury to grow our business in Medellin. And also the women are beautiful and now I'm leaving here with a wifey, so it worked out well. Yeah, and also I don't know if you're saying like the city, you know Medellin is a humongous city. Yeah. Like Medellin is bigger than most US cities. It's four million people, it's the size of Los Angeles, which is by the way, the second biggest city. Hmm. in the United States. And Susanna, um, yeah, dude, I would say everything Brennan just mentioned. Um, if you are starting a business, we had money and we were making money right away, but we decided to move down here because like just from a cost perspective, we knew that we would have less stress and could do more with our money down here to grow our business. Hmm. And that really did pay off. So I would recommend to anyone if you're trying to start an online business, like go somewhere where you you do you are free of the stress of having to pay for a bunch of stuff, so you can just stack money, save it up, then go back to markets like London or Tokyo or New York that are, are more expensive. Jason JB, what's up? Jason Jarolo. Jason asks, what type of accounting practices do you guys use in the business? Do you pay yourselves a salary? Use an accountant or manage the the books on your own? I like, dude. I like these questions. Yeah, these are good questions. Yeah, very interesting. Tell them, Brandon. Tell them what we use. All right, we use a service called Bench.co, and so what they do is they give us a complete. Uh, balance sheet and statement every single month telling us you know what our revenue was what our uh, expenses were profit organizes it all so it's ready for taxes to send off so this is really nice that is our monthly system uh, we want to get more sophisticated in the future and start breaking this down per week we're just yeah. not not quite there yet yeah that's just like our but that's bookkeeping system yeah and then we have an we do have an account that we use um, it's Brandon's accountant that now is our accountant. Shout out Charlie 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 
Thank you, my friend. Um, yeah, and, and we pay ourselves salaries. Mm -hmm. we're, we're responsible like that. We are. In the beginning, we were just like taking money. We're like yeah. just surviving. Guys, just to give you an idea of going back to the other question about belief and faith, like when Brandon and I started this business, like there was no system. Like we were just taking money out as we needed it. And it wasn't like a pretty thing. And like my point in saying all this is like, all of that did not prevent us from continuing to make content and videos that we're passionate about. So don't get caught up in the details of, oh, I can, you know, running a business is difficult, so I can't follow my passion and put my content out on the internet. Screw that, just do it anyway. Just do it, just do the thing. Nathan asks, can protein powder be dangerous when not taken carefully? You think? You mm. think it kill you? Huh? Mm. Think if you take it, it'll kill you? You know what I think? I think too much of anything isn't good. Uh, if you're only consuming protein powder and you're not consuming real food, then I'm sure that's going to be tougher on your liver and not be good for you in the long term. Uh, it's going to be tough on your whole household too. You're going to be farting everywhere. Ooh, that's true. But I, I drink a scoop a day. I do a scoop a day. Yeah, I'm a scoop, scoop and a half. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I realized, dude? I actually do a scoop and a half. Yeah, I, I do a scoop, scoop and a half. half. Yeah. I do a heaping scoop. Ah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Thibo asks, what can happen if we only eat 700 calories a day? You're going to shrivel up and die, my friend. No, I'm kidding. That brand go. Yo, seriously? People need to understand that if you eat in this much of a calorie deficit, you will f up your metabolism. Because people who want to eat in a calorie deficit and go that much into a calorie deficit, there's nowhere for you to go deeper. Okay? And so your leptin, which controls your is the hormone that controls how fast your metabolism function, is gonna be completely out of whack. And so you may actually actually put on more body fat because your body goes into survival mode and says, oh my God, I'm only getting 700 calories a day. Every time I get the 700 calories, I'm going to store it as fat. So don't do that shit. I swear, don't do it. Don't. Use the calculator. Don't. Hey, eat the food that we tell you, okay? Mm -hmm. Come on, Fubo. We want you to you know, be alive to do the thing, my friend. <laughs> it's plain, so but not really. Andres asks, I really would like y'all's take on this. Kind of gross, but it's part of the journey. My workouts are always 200% intensity. Good job, dude. And sometimes I like to do it outside in the sun, but pushing myself to my absolute limit sometimes has me throw up. How do I just to make sure I get my macros for the day or should I just not micromanage that far? Brandon, go ahead, my friend. Bro, I'm going to say just cut your workout a little short before you throw up. If you're getting to the edge of where you're about to throw up, I go there sometimes, I'm sure Dan does too. Mm -hmm. You just stop there and like you're good. You're good. Do not throw up any further, man, because the, the stomach acid that comes up is just not going to be good for your overall health. I don't even know the health effects. Just but also, like, dude, you, you put the nail on the, you hit the nail on the head. You're going 200%, go 110% to 150. Don't go 200 because, like, we don't want you to get to the point where, like, you you die like that. I mean, and we want it to be fun as well, right? Yeah, We want exactly. it to be sustainable. So it's not sustainable if you're going to be thrown up every single time you work out. And also, man, don't, like, the macros has nothing to do with that. Just hit your calories and macros. If your goal is to lose body fat, then put it in a calorie deficit and hit those. Um, but don't maybe don't work out right after you've eaten a big meal. That could be uh, part of the issue. Tommy asks, best way to beat sugar cravings. Tommy, this is what I do. I would like work with your sugar cravings. If you need to use your macronutrient and calorie budget to get a little bit of sugar in, but make sure you just hit your numbers and then it has to be a cold stop. It's just, this is one of these things where we say do the thing where like when you know you have no more carbs left for the day, you just say, okay, no more Twizzlers. Yeah, dude, a way, a perfect, I agree with everything Brandon said, and an example of the way that I do that is sometimes my meals are that Natto, Natto is a restaurant down here that we like, I always eat a piece of cake at that. And I eat there like three times a week. So three times a week, I'm eating a piece of cake for dinner because I need that, like I like to have those, you know, I like to give in to those sugar cravings, but I, I fit them in my macros. So understand that while I'm eating that piece of cake, I also get chicken, like chicken and coconut soup, Tom Ka soup, and a huge salad with like salmon or something. So I'm getting a bunch of nutrients and only about 30% of that meal is the sugar. 70-30. Remember the 70-30 rule. JL asks, can you talk a little bit more about your upcoming app? What will be on it? Will it be free? Okay. The app is going to be free for all the beginner level exercise workouts. So it's going to be the free version is going to allow you to 
build and create your own workouts. We're also gonna have some custom workouts there. We're also going to have a feature that teaches you how to jump rope as well. It's gonna be a series on there. Um, the paid version is gonna be $3.99, so it's four bucks. And you'll get unlimited access, and basically you're gonna be able to build your own workouts, have timers. Uh, it's, it's like the perfect timer app that we use in conjunction with like the workouts you see in the four week challenge together. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's, we're super psyched about this because this is gonna finally make uh, digesting our workouts and everything and, and completing them super, super easy. So any of the timer apps that you, that you use now, it's gonna be like one of those, except you can create your own Zen Dude workouts with our faces and our, we're gonna be in the videos mm -hmm. and stuff. Our exercise tutorials, everything just live playing for you. Mm-hmm. Jay, second question. Also, are you guys really brothers or just good friends? What, you don't think this is my bro? You don't think this is my bro? You know, we used to get this a lot more when Dan had a, a man bun. Actually, Ooh, today, yeah. I was at a restaurant and this woman thought I was Dan. I ordered food and she was like, I know what you want. I was like, how do you know what I want? I don't come here. Bro, personally, I think that we are brothers. We just don't, we just don't know. Like, yeah. We were separated. Separated birth. Yeah. So that's the answer. So we're not blood brothers that we know of, but we're mejor hermanos best bros yeah. best bros you know what i'm saying bros to life ride or die <laughs> yep rob Ma, rob bob asks who would win out of a crocodile and batman dude great question man i mean easy question but whatever I mean, is it easy? I would say Batman. Yeah, bro. I would say Me Batman too. would because <laughs> Batman's a hero and he finds a way to save the day. I mean, if Batman, obviously, if Batman can beat um, what's his name, the the ice dude, Professor Freeze. No, Mister Freeze. Mister Freeze. If Batman can beat Mister Freeze, he can. Who can? Who can throw ice at you like that? He can. Yeah. He can take care of a crocodile. He's not wearing hockey pants. <laughs> that, that, again, I did this on a live, but guys, I just want to be the guy who does Batman's voice in Dark Knight. Because Christian Bale's not doing that. <laughs> Christian Bale's not doing that. Yeah, I'm not the one wearing hockey pants. <laughs> That's not Christian Bale. <laughs> That's Dan. That's me. Dan. Kabir asks, what is the key to gaining muscle? Eating. Oh, oh. Coughing? Ah, ah. Excuse you. Eating in a calorie surplus and lifting weights three times a week. Nicholas asks, hey DMB, hey Nicholas. I feel like it's a business, like uh, Duns and Street. Bradstreet. It is, uh, it's a yeah. business. That's what I always think of too. Hey Duns and Bradstreet. <laughs> I find it hard, it's Dun and Bradstreet. Bob. Dun and Bradstreet. <laughs> I find it hard to stick to my workouts for more than two weeks it's like I work out for two weeks and suddenly I find myself not working out at all from then. Any advice, we're gonna go. You haven't created the habit yet. That's the biggest thing, man. You gotta create the habit. So when you get to two weeks and then one day you just don't wanna work out, you just have to force the issue there. And that means you have to budget the time. And that means there needs to be a little chunk on your calendar from six to 7 p.m. when you get off work where you go into the parking lot and you pull out your jump rope and you whip that thing for 20 minutes as hard as you can. You get back in your car and you go, Whoa! Why? Why do you stop working out? Like, bro, if you find yourself not working out, then just do it. Like if you, in your mind, if you worked out for two weeks straight, 14 days, and on the 15th day, you're like, I'm not gonna work out today. Just don't do that. Just work out. Like, dude, yeah. I get so angry when I answer this question. Dude. No, because it, 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 guys, like I'm giving you tough love. Like, trust me, dude, we love you. We support you in this, but we have to give you guys tough love. Like there should be no reason why you can't, you can't ask like, Oh man, I suddenly find myself not working out. What's the deal? What's the deal? You're just not working out. Just do it. Yeah. It, it reminds me of like a dude who's just like, you know, I was doing so well there. And then, you know, suddenly I find myself having sex with a woman who's not my wife. And like, it just yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just like, you, you made the decision to not, to not work out. So don't make that decision. Make the decision to work out. That's it. I mean, dude, there's so many days. There's so many days where I'm like, I just don't want to work out. And then the little, my, my mind, Little Dan pops up and it's like, shut up, Dan, just go work out. You don't have a choice. Like, mm. it's, not, it's not something that you can decide. You have to. Create a little Dan in the back of your head. Hey, guys, any good, healthy Colombian, healthy Colombian recipes you want to share? Healthy and San Cocho. San Cocho. I know, I'm kidding. There's a lot of healthy Colombian food, actually. Yeah. Very macro-friendly, not, micro not micronutrient heavy. True. True. Um, dude, my favorite one, it's not like super healthy, but 
it's not super unhealthy. Remember, it's not about unhealthy and healthy. Um, my favorite breakfast, I love this breakfast. Mm. Cafe con leche, which is just a little bit of coffee with a ton of milk. And then... Uh, a little bit of coffee and a ton of milk. It's a lot of milk. Uh-huh. Bro, it's like half milk, half coffee. They don't do splash like in the, the US. Mm. But I would say it's, uh, it's eggs with tomato, onions, and ham. And then an arepa with a little bit of butter and quesito cheese. That is like... Dude, it's my favorite. I love it. Mm. I love it. I love it. Even though I don't eat it for breakfast, I actually eat that most days. I like for 2, lunch. 2 p.m. Yeah. I like Sancocho. Juca, papas, Ooh, it's av- avocado, it's beef. Good. Dude, I had Sancocho yesterday. Three types of meat. Ribs, chicken, and beef. Ribs, chicken, and beef? It's fire. Best Sancocho in my life. They must, they must, you must be a little bit. Gilami. Mr. I it's Gilami. Mr. Dude. Fontana. Yeah, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, <clears> but my dude, we're here to answer your question. What's up, players? Hope you're fine. I'd like to know your body fat rate before parentheses. I'm talking about the photos you show all the time when you used to be big and now. Cheers from Switzerland. Burn gut. Yeah. So I know why you put quotations around big. Because some people might look at our photos, especially mine, and be like, mm, you're big, but you're not a fat dude. Yeah, you and fat. I was probably about 20% body fat, honestly. I was yeah. about 20% body fat when I was my biggest. And I was probably about 22 to 23 percent body fat at my biggest. Again, guys, we we we're not saying that we were fat people before, but we were large. And trust me, like that that we we lost 70 pounds, like 70 pounds each. Like that was somewhere, you know. Straight up, straight up. Matthew asks, Brandon, you said you had done fitness modeling, so I wanted to ask whether it is necessary to be tall to do to be a fitness model if you are good in other areas. I'm 5'7", and yes, I'm from India. What does he mean good in other areas? And why, yes, I'm from India. <laughs> Look, I'm 5'7", but I got a, I got a two-foot <laughs> and I model. So. Yo, you could for sure be a fitness model. Dude, what is Mark Wahlberg? Isn't he like 5'8"? Dude, he's short and he looks Do you remember him great. in the Calvin Klein commercials? He was all up in that fitness modeling game. Jay Beebs, he's not that tall. And yeah. Jay, he looks great, and uh, he's, he's been done fitness modeling. Yo, straight up, um, definitely some guys who are taller get gigs, but there's a lot of dudes who are like medium height that get gigs as well. So if you get the physique, if you're lean, if you're sculpted, you're going to get work. We actually made a video on this. It's called How to Get a Fitness Model Body, where I talk you through how you go and try to get that career. So watch that video on YouTube. Laura asks, what should I do if I'm 17 and can't afford buying my own food? I'm living at my parents' house, so it's a bit difficult for me counting macros and stuff. Girl, I hear mm. you. Laura, that's a tough situation. That was tough. It is. For me. If I if I was you, I would you just have to do what you can. I'm sure your parents buy eggs, right? I'm sure they buy deli meat. Um, I'm sure they buy a lot of foods that you can make healthier recipes with. And at the end of the day, you're just gonna have to do portion control, which is, I know it's hard to do, but do your best to portion control and you're gonna be able to get yourself in a slight calorie deficit. And you're 17, you shouldn't stress about this too much. Just try to eat whole foods as much as you can and you're gonna be all right. Whole foods being real food, fruit, veggies, fish, nuts, and lean meats. And yeah. well, red meat. And when you can, when, you're, when your mom or dad, whoever goes shopping, goes shopping, ask them if you can go with them and you know, sneak some of food, some of those healthy foods in the, in the shopping cart. Exactly, exactly. I agree with Brandon. Aaron asks, what's up Zen dudes? What's up Aaron? I'm in the Royal Air Force over here in the UK. Nice. Thank you, my dude. Wait, no, I don't know. I salute you. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're not from the UK. I don't care, man. I'm just saluting like someone who's fighting for their country, you know? Or thanks. like standing up. Well, for they're your an ally, so thanks for, you know, putting up with. Uh, I'm yeah, go thanks ahead. for putting up with the US. Thanks <laughs> for putting up with us. Basically. Uh, I'm in the Royal Air Force over here in the UK and I'm going away for four months. Obviously, I'm taking my crossroad, but I won't be in control of cooking my own meals. Any advice on how to keep shedding those pounds while eating in the mess hall for all that time? Yes, I've downloaded all 207 episodes, oh. podcast episodes to take with me. Hell yeah. Thank you, bro. Uh, Porsche control. This is so hard. This is so hard. This is probably why I was a fat dude in college. Insane. Well, along with I was supposed to be fat because I was a de- defensive end. But along with that, like it's so hard to have all this food and then say I'm only going to eat this much of it. But dude, this is going to be the test of your will, man. You can do it. We believe in you. You just have to Porsche control your food. Portion control, and honestly, if you're in a mess hall or a cafeteria, even if you're in uh, like the military of some sort, I'm sure they're giving you like pretty good macro-friendly fruit food. And I mean, what I mean by that is 
you guys are always training and working out, so they gotta feed you stuff like, uh, you know, meats, uh, starchy vegetables, thick carbs like potatoes and things like that. So I think that actually hitting your macros would be pretty easy in a situation like that. Tell me otherwise, but I think you can do it, man. It's all about hitting those numbers, tracking it consistently in MyFitnessPal as you build up awareness. Raphael asks, guys, will you ever create a Zen Dude jump rope? Right now, our main focus is helping as many people transform their lives as possible. Uh, what we do down the road, road, as far as like physical products goes, like we don't, we don't know. We're not even thinking there right now. Right now, we want to help as many people transform their body with a jump rope as possible. And fortunately, we have the best partners in the world, the cross ropes right here. So we're not in any urgency to try to make our own jump rope. Real quick, guys, if you want the cross rope, we use all of their jump ropes. We have them in all of our videos. Check them out for 10% discount below. You can get this specific rope right here and others that are on the site. This would probably be a good time also shout out Athletic Greens. Yeah, give them a shout out. AG, this is our nutrition company right here. They are one of the most top quality uh, nutrition and supplementation companies. That's why we work with them. We got the protein here and the green juice. We also have BCAAs, which Brandon and I take uh, sometimes, but we take these two things all the time. The green juice is the best tasting, uh, most beneficial green juice that we have personally found in the market. So check those out. They are also linked up below. Raul asks, dudes, when will you start accepting payments through Amazon? Yo, Rahul, we currently sell the Simple Meal System on Amazon, so you can go there right now and search Simple Meal System and you'll find that there. And uh, we have a jump rope workout program that we're launching this weekend, and we might throw that on Amazon too, so wait on it, my brother. Gustavo asks, what was the best place you guys ever jumped rope but did not make a video? I like this question. Ah, I did not make a video. I jump rope next to like the, the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City, which is pretty cool. I didn't take any videos there. That was pretty that's cool. That's a good one. I did it on the other side in Jersey City and didn't really take it. Yeah, that's a good one. Dude, I was thinking uh, we didn't make a jump rope video in San Andres, and I think that would have been a dope mm. setting to make a jump rope video. That's a, a little little island off the coast of Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Nicaragua. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a guest question. Bonus Someone, question. Bonus round. Someone on Instagram, but I don't know what their name was. I forget their name on Instagram, but check it. Here's the question. The person was asking, since uh, the limit of protein you should eat per every meal is 30 grams, how do you hit your total number of protein per day? And we have a special answer for that, Brandon, go ahead. Yeah. So we actually don't agree with what he said about only being able to metabolize 30 grams of protein uh, yeah. within that period of time. It's not a thing. We always say just focus on eating the total amount of calorie and macronutrients for an entire day. I mean, to be honest, we're able to maintain our physiques and a lot of times we're only eating you know, two or one meal a day later in the day. So if that was true, like we wouldn't be able to maintain any of our muscle mass and like our bodies would just go to shit. And so it's not true. Just focus on eating the total amount of calories, macronutrients. Just that, just that the, uh, like I totally understand where you're coming from because there probably is like a lot of, uh, you know, like articles that say that 30 yeah. grams is That's like, that's a bodybuilding body thing. Exactly. That's like bodybuilding pseudoscience that hasn't been really proven out. And also at the same time, that's impossible because guys, you have to understand the principle that everyone's body is different. For me, that threshold is probably like me and Brandon, 60 to 80 grams of protein per meal for someone much smaller. Yeah, their body might only be able to get 20 grams of protein per meal. But the point is everyone's body's different. Mm. So when you see blanket statements like this is that way or this is how much like one gram of pro, uh, protein per pound of body weight, whatever, like all that, that old fitness dogma, you can't go off that because everyone's body truly is different and you have to know the certain ratios of macronutrients for your specific mm -hmm. body. So avoid the artificial complexity <clears throat> and just stick to doing the thing. Stick to doing the thing, ladies and gentlemen. We wanna thank you for another fantastic episode. Let's clap it up. Zendu Nation.